Welcome everyone and thank you for attending our webinar. Today we will talk about various education programs including special pricing, licensing, and training. I am Reese Armstrong, Product Marketing Manager for Imagine. Our speaker today is Global Education and Inside Sales Manager Mike Lane. This presentation is being recorded. You will receive a link to the recording in a day or two. Please feel free to forward it to your colleagues or students or anyone else that might find the presentation interesting. Also, feel free to type your questions into the Q&A portion of the chat window and they will be answered at the end of the presentation. If we run out of time for your specific question, we will answer it personally via email. Okay, let's get started. Thanks, Reese. First and foremost, I hope you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. In these uncertain times, coming together as a community is more important than ever before. And please know that Hexagon is here to support you and help you as our customers as much as we possibly can. So this webinar was originally scheduled to be an instructor-led workshop at the AAG annual meeting this week. And if you're not familiar, AAG is the American Association of Geographers. And each year there's an annual meeting with about 10,000 attendees um, from all over the world, many of which are students and academics presenting their research and recent publications. But like so many events around the world, the annual meeting was canceled. But I still wanted to provide an education update to those who plan to join me for this workshop this week in Denver. But I also wanted to open it up to anyone and everyone who could tune in and watch the presentation from around the globe. This presentation will have something for everyone. Maybe you currently work with Hexagon software and you're interested in our updates. Maybe you're looking for some inspiration and ideas for some upcoming research and want to hear other student projects. Maybe you're interested in Hexagon's response and mapping of current events in COVID-19. But whatever the reason for joining today, I know you're going to learn something new. As Reese mentioned, we are recording. So you will be sent the recording as well as this presentation in PDF format with all of the embedded hyperlinks. There's going to be some other useful links that we'll include in the follow up email that I'll point out along the way. This is going to be a long presentation, so hang in there. <laughs> There's a lot of cool videos and really interesting student stories scattered throughout. So I promise it's not going to be an hour and a half of death by PowerPoint. I'm actually really excited to have this much time so I can fully explain the depth of our education program and how it really directly relates to Hexagon's mission and our portfolios. So without further ado, let's get started. Hexagon Geospatial's division has published an official response to COVID-19. Our main priority is to keep everyone, our customers, our employees, everyone safe. So we're following all guidelines at a local, state, and national level. We recognize that our customers need us more than ever, so we're helping in every possible way we can to provide technology to assist in these unprecedented times. Here are some of the ways. We're offering COVID-19 dashboards, which use the feature analyzer and smart map technology to see daily updates. We're offering free home licenses to those Power Portfolio customers these are customers with Erdas Imagine, GeoMedia, ImageStation, etc. Our public instructor-led training is being moved to an interactive, dynamic online format. So a WebEx similar to this, but training will be able to be done safely from, from your home. We have free access to our MapX and Map Enterprise sandboxes for academics. And I'm going to get into these and these platforms later on. We also have mobile alert for COVID-19. Now let's dig into these in a little bit more detail. In response to the COVID-19 global pandemic, Hexagon has, has developed this interactive dashboard, which is a smart map. And it's used for visualizing, analyzing, and tracking the virus. The data is powered and comes from the Johns Hopkins Center for System Science and Engineering. So they collect CSV files, uh, Excel spreadsheets that are updated daily with the statistics by Johns Hopkins. 
what we've done is we've processed a REST API that populates this Feature Analyzer app with the daily feed, so it's automated. This app you're seeing now is actually today's data that was fed in at 8 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. With this app, you can filter by country. You can filter again by either confirmed cases, recovered cases, deaths, or any combinations. This dashboard literally gives you thousands of answers in a very simple, easy, and ready to use interface. Again, this dashboard is called Feature Analyzer, and this is an example of a hexagon smart map. While in-person events are being canceled, we're taking this time to add more assets to our digital library. What you're seeing here is what we're offering in April alone. More webinars, more online trainings, and more workshops. You can participate in all of these safely from your home. The webinars are free, so if you find something interesting, please register. Like this webinar, you'll be sent the recording, even if you can't make the live session. We have an active and growing users community. Anyone and everyone can join Hexagon Geospatial Community, the generic Hexagon Geospatial Community. Students, faculty, researchers, all you have to do is register. It's free and instantaneous. You then have access to see knowledge bases, join discussion boards, and ask public questions that our user base, as well as our support analysts, and even our product managers all participate and help to provide answers. This is the best way for students using home and student licenses to get technical support for your questions. Now, if you're a professor or an educator and you would like to use our curriculum in your courses, you can apply for the Hexagon Geospatial U community. So these are for the people that are actually going to be teaching our courses. This access will give you the most up-to-date curriculum, so imagine 2020, which is free for our, for our customers. There's literally thousands of pages of step-by-step -step tutorials for your labs, example data included, even PowerPoints to use in your lectures. You can see you can use the tutorials straight out of the box, or you can use them as a template and modify using your own local or regional data. This is also a great site to take a deeper dive into some of the new technology available for education, like Map Enterprise and MapX and Luciad. So what additional resources besides the community, um, such as the events like these? The events are located under the Contact Us page on our website. You can also look at archived webinars to scroll through at your convenience. There's e-training and tech talks, which demonstrate all different types of hexagon solutions being used in every day in all different industries. Our online documentation is being updated constantly. We have these free sandboxes to play in, which I'll talk about and explain later. And the Sensing Change blog, where we tell interesting stories and share updates. If you're using hexagon technology and want to share your story, we're happy to publish your work on our blog. The Education FAQ. You're going to receive this link in the follow-up email. You can also find it on the education page of the hexagongeospatial.com website. This gives you direct links to downloads, instructions, videos on how to license the soft software. Uh, this is your one-stop shop the one link and document that you can find all necessary information for education and education customers. Please bookmark this page for easy referencing, provide it for your students so that they have the instructions and in the videos on how to download the software and properly uh, install and license the version that you're using. If you're not familiar with Brilliant Remote Sensing Labs, they're a training partner. Brilliant Remote Sensing Labs has a really great online portal that teaches remote sensing science. There's three different certifications, beginning, advanced, uh, intermediate, and advanced, with 16 short courses. And 13 of those short courses use ERDAS Imagine to reinforce and teach the science and theory of remote sensing. 
Now, since the majority of the world is practicing social distancing and everyone's staying at home right now, this is a really great opportunity to use this time to be productive, learn remote sensing, get certified, learn a new software package. Brilliant Remote Sensing Labs is providing very deeply discounted courses during this time in response to COVID-19. We thank them for their continued partnership and their generous contribution in enabling students to continue their education. Hexagon's Mobile Alert. If you're not familiar with Mobile Alert, it's a cloud-based service. It collects crowdsource information for organizations such as local governments who subscribe. Their citizens can then download and use the Mobile Alert app on their iOS or Android device, and it's free for them to send information that they log to authorities. So Mobile Alert can help citizens to report situations to the government authorities and help to manage issues that could be related to COVID-19. For example, there may be locations where there's shortage of supplies, or maybe there are illegal gatherings where social distancing rules aren't being followed. Um, as well, it could be used to enable people to offer help to their communities. Maybe they wanna help deliver groceries or medicine to citizens that are at home, that are at sick and can't leave their homes. So by offering these types of citizen reporting ideas and solutions for these non-critical issues using this mobile app, the real crisis management phone lines are offloaded. They're available for critical life or death issues. So it provides students with an opportunity to really become involved and help in their communities, which is really, really important right now. So unrelated to COVID-19, but related to mobile alert, this story was actually published just this week. Lutz University in Poland is creating a smart campus with mobile alert. They're using this app, which is free for students to download and provide information to the university. This university is, is large, it has four campuses, so it can be really difficult to keep up with issues and maintenance. Students can take photos around campus, geotag, which are geotagged, and then report those by using these 11 categories to start. By providing this crowdsource information, students can actively participate in helping to keep their campus safe and beautiful. Speaking of smart campuses, Hexagon recently, last year, acquired a company called Thermopylae. Thermopylae is one of the few premier Google partners in North America. Therefore, through this acquisition, Hexagon Geospatial Division is now an official reseller of Google APIs. And this includes Google Cloud, G Suite, and Google Maps. We have a special offer right now for universities to use Google within their university websites for campus maps, identifying places of interest, routing from point A to point B, and even auto-filling forms for registration, alumni, and even bookstores. The benefits for purchasing Google through a partner like Hexagon are twofold. The first is billing. With being a partner, uh, by purchasing through a partner, you have easy annual payments versus receiving a bill from Google based on your monthly usage every single month. And second, as a partner, Hexagon Geospatial provides technical support we will help you optimize your code within your website, which will ultimately save you money by using these APIs. So if you're interested in learning more, please let us know. Now I wanna switch gears a bit, and we're gonna talk about Hexagon's overall goals and mission. Hexagon strives to make it easier to experience real-time location intelligence. So our goal is to model the real, real world digitally. You think about this in terms of five dimensions of location intelligence. The first is to understand what did happen in the past. We're actually quite good at this in the geospatial world. The second is to monitor what is happening right now, currently, today, in this moment. Next is to predict what could happen, which is great, but what if we could take it a step further? Hexagon simulates 
and plans for what actually should happen. And then fifth, we want to be able to influence and participate in what ultimately will happen. So here we see these five dimensions again, starting from a fully static digital world of what happened yesterday. So this is traditional geospatial, where we as academics usually, we acquire data, we perform some research, we draw our conclusions, and we publish those. But this line then moves towards an autonomous world, an operational world, using smart digital reality of not only what's happening right now, but what could happen, what should happen, and what will happen in the future. So please keep this slide in mind as I move through the presentation. I'm going to talk about how this relates to Hexagon's portfolios and how that in turn directly relates to our education offerings. So here we see Hexagon's portfolios and how they relate to the previous slide's timeline. The Power Portfolio, these are the traditional products you probably know and familiar with. GIS, remote sensing, photogrammetry, all dealing with pretty much static data. This data was collected in the past. We process it, we author it, we transform that raw data into information, but it's old, it's yesterday's data. The world's already changed since the acquisition and even the results have been published. Then we move into the map portfolio. And this is where we can really build targeted geospatial apps that connect to dynamic and real-time data feeds. An example is the COVID-19 dashboard where we actually saw today's data just populated an hour ago. So what is happening right now? And finally, we move into the Lucy Ad portfolio, which is real-time situational awareness. This is the future. This is where we can model and not only predict, but simulate and plan and participate in hopefully a better outcome. So many of our customers are faced with what we call the GeoOps challenge, this gap between our geospatial world that we're so used to and the operational world. So while the geospatial world is focused on acquisition, processing, managing, and distributing data, the operational world takes this data and actually has to put it into action very quickly. So Hexagon Solutions shorten that life cycle loop from the time of acquisition and putting that into action. So our appro approach to close this gap, again, is called smart digital reality. And it means fusing together all of these data sources. You know we have so much data coming in from all different places these days. Fusing that into one single platform, which can handle old static data, new and current dynamic data, and data from other enterprise systems and sources. This allows us to provide real-time location intelligence in 5D. What was, what is, what could be, should be, and ultimately will be. Hexagon Geospatial offers products groups in these three portfolios, depending upon what you want to use whether you want an off-the-shelf solution, a product to install and use, or you want to configure your own customized application, or you want to start from scratch and completely build your own. So the first is the Power Portfolio, okay? This is the end products for end users. It offers the best photogrammetry, remote sensing, GIS, cartography, all of these technologies available, and you can use them straight out of the box. Next, we move into Map Enterprise. It's a cloud-based platform, and it's used to design, build, and host smart maps. So they're dynamic, they're interactive, they're targeted. They require configuration, not necessarily development and developer skills, but you re they're required to configure applications and customize them. And then finally, Luciad. Luciad has some of the world's most critical missions. These are developers and users with advanced visual analytics to be able to do real-time location intelligence. These are APIs. These are build your own applications. 
So as I talk from about these applications, Power Portfolio, Map, and Luciad, this is the order in which I'm going to talk about them in the presentation and how these relate to our education offerings. As you can see, Hexagon Geospatial Division has all the software you need to create actionable information from raw data. Our sister companies, like Leica, they're part of the Hexagon family, and they also help to shorten this life cycle. They collect the data with their hardware, and then we're able to process that and generate actionable information very quickly. So as Hexagon and our sister companies, we operate fully as one Hexagon to shorten that life cycle as well. Now, let's jump into Hexagon Geospatial U. U stands for university. This is the name of the overall education and academic program. So this includes the software that we all bundle together and then deeply discount for education purposes. It also includes grants, like the free campus-wide grant, the curriculum writing grant, internships, partnerships with other academic institutions and nonprofits. What's important to know about Hexagon Geospatial's U is it has a solution and an offering for every single step of your education. Whether you're just learning how to spell GIS or you're teaching or taking an intro to geography or GIS course, maybe you're just starting to look at imagery and want to learn more about how remote sensing can benefit your project. Maybe you're a developer and you want to create apps using our SDKs and APIs. Whether you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, getting your master's, PhD, or even a postdoc, we have software solutions that can benefit you, your education, and your research. We're committed to ensuring our academics have access to and can use Hexagon technology to help us advance our geospatial science as a whole. Now let's look at the portfolio slide one more time, but in terms of Hexagon Geospatial U, the education portfolio. We've got our desktop program, desktop educational program, which has our GIS remote sensing photogrammetry. We move into our map portfolio for configuring and creating geospatial apps. There are three options, and I'm going to talk about all three of them. And then we move into Luciad, which is our real-time situational awareness, developers building applications with APIs. So again, this is the order that we're going to work through today with our education offerings taking time to explain each one, what's new, give a few videos and demos, and provide some student projects along the way. All right, I hope you're still with me because we're going to continue on to what is the desktop educational program. So, one of our most commonly used education bundles is this desktop education program. Desktop means you install it on your computer. You have a license, usually expires annually, and you have to renew it. These are our products like GIS, Geomedia, photogrammetry, like Imagine Photogrammetry, and remote sensing, or as Imagine. The EDU package is a licensed bundle, meaning that all of these products that you're seeing on the screen right now are typically sold separately in the commercial world. But as educators and students and a customer, of the desktop education program, you have access to all of this. Continued on page two. <laughs> I encourage you to take advantage of all of the software in this bundle. Even simply educating your students and letting them know they have these licenses to download and install a package like Geomedia, a GIS package, to learn a new, new software, maybe even on their own, on their own time. But by working with more than one software, a student learns concepts, theory, and the actual science to solve geospatial problems. By using one software package their entire academic career, it might only teach them the order in which to click buttons. So the wider variety of applications a student has worked with and understands diversifies their resume. It makes them much more marketable when they go out into the real world and they apply for that first job package that most of you that are listening are probably most familiar with is ERDAS Imagine. And it consolidates remote sensing photogrammetry, point cloud analysis, basic vector analysis, 
spatial modeling, hyperspectral, radar into one single product. You can think of Verdas Imagine as a giant Swiss army knife, but with geospatial uh, utensils. So what does that actually mean? It means that anything and everything you could possibly do with imagery can be done within this toolbox of Erdas Imagine. If you want to visualize data in 2D or 3D or even images in stereo, maybe you want to take measurements in 2D or 3D or convert data from one data uh, format to another. Spatial model and analysis. Perhaps you're going to do some color balancing and mosaic of smaller tiles into a larger image. Compressing data from one data set from a compressing data from a large data set into a smaller data set to be able to save time, money, and stream that over the internet. Land cover classifications, mapping, terrain categorization, point clouds, editing and classification, vector feature capture and updating, radar analysis, even differential radar interferometry orthorectification of satellite, aerial, UAV data, creating terrain, editing and analyzing it, machine and deep learning, feature extraction, mapping and also report generation and printing. Now, I might have lost some of you on naming all of these functions that Imagine does, but you get the idea. Guess Imagine is the ultimate Swiss Army knife. Now let's look at some of the functions here and some of the solutions and, and things that you can solve with Imagine. Point clouds. So we have processing tools in Imagine that are geared toward point cloud processing. And by post-processing, the point we mean the point cloud is already in LAS or LAS format. All of the point cloud functionality that I'm going to show you in the upcoming slides now, in the next slides, is included in the desktop program. There are no add-ons, no extra costs, nothing to work with LiDAR. So we have tools for editing LiDAR data while it's displayed in a viewer. You can select points, change the Z value, add an offset, recode classes, or maybe even delete the points altogether. You can create tiles for better data management. We can do RGB encoding so that you can add brightness values to the already existing XYZ values, and brightness values can be near infrared and RGB. You can subset point clouds for smaller areas to work in, split, merge, filter, extract classes, return, etc. So these tools are production oriented. They can be configured to process many, many tiles at once. They use multiple cores to process on CPUs, or even use multiple machines with Condor. So you can batch these processes and schedule them and process them at a later time. So here we see visualization of LiDAR data and point cloud data in 2D, and we see it in 3D, and then we can also provide it in a profile view in which we can draw a line or draw a polygon to visualize front and side views. We can take measurements top to bottom. We can even select the points within these two different viewers, delete, move, offset, etc. So point cloud data either comes from a LiDAR sensor, like a Leica um, uh, LiDAR sensor, or from stereo collection and photogrammetry. We can capture the data, but it's going to be in a digital surface model, meaning it has all of the features on the Earth's surface. So for some applications, this might be the data set that we require. We need to know where the buildings are, where the trees are. But for some applications, we need a bare Earth model, just what's on the ground. We call this a digital terrain model. So classifying the points and putting them into separate places, like rooftops, we can then mask or delete or edit those points so that just what is remaining is only bare earth. So here we see different categories and classifications. This is the last 1.3 spec. We also support last 1.4. You can deselect each of these different classes to visualize uh, the classes within the viewer, so displaying or hiding them. And you can also change the colors to something that you would like. Now, if you look at this, and if we had to manually digitize all of these buildings or an entire city 
or a county. It would take a lot of time. The idea here is to use point cloud data to classify the buildings automatically, extract the footprint, and then we can even take this a step further and use the vector cleanup operators to create a GIS file to add or update our GIS database. So going from point cloud to classifying rooftops to vector layer, cleaning that up and replacing old data in your database. Now let's take a look at all of this in action. The left view is 2D, right view is 3D. You'll see here that the point cloud is styled in a color ramp by elevation. Red is the highest points, blue lowest. The ramp is customizable of the colors and you can view the points um, in different ways and in different perspective with 3D. This is a lot of points, but since the viewer is multi-threaded, it's fast and smooth to move around. Now let's look at LiDAR and point cloud data displayed in different ways. Right now you're seeing it again in this color ramp elevation. So the points are from highest to lowest. You take the same file and we're able to change the color by into classes. So we might be interested here in only the ground. So we can deselect unclassified and low point and only see the ground. Finally, we can look at how to process these data sets. So we're watching a spatial model being built right now. And I'm going to talk about the spatial model in depth in just a minute. What we're doing is stringing together a workflow. And that includes a point cloud like you just saw input and then a criteria search so we can delete certain classes and then we're going to process that. Okay, so we're finding and looking at the point cloud delete points for the ground. And then we're going to preview this. Previewing the output is close to real time without any real processing. So we can go back, tweak the model, come back, do another preview. And then we finally can process the output that we are happy with and then save the model. We can then make this model generic and use it for any point clouds that we have um, so that we're able to um, process that data. Radar. So radar is a little bit different. Um, it's not as easy for us to interpret as a um, as optical imagery. Radar is an active sensor. So what that means is we can gather information day or night through weather events, through clouds, etc. We're optimizing our radar offering by offering real-time visualization and processing. No more having to wait for the processes and wait for the outputs for these large data sets. They happen instantaneously. So speckle suppression, target detection, change detection, feature extraction, all happen with a click of a button. The image what you're seeing here on the screen is called blue is new, red is fled. So it's a comparison of two different radar images taken from two different time periods. And the blue pixels are ones that were not there in the before image, but are in there in the new image and the red vice versa. One click of a button and instant change detection. This allows us to see movement of ships, planes, cars, even vegetation growth and deforestation. So if you're interested in radar, you're gonna love to see an upcoming webinar. Mark your calendars. We're joining, we're doing a joint webinar with the American Geosciences Institute next week. Our in-house radar expert, Daryl Holcomb, and a guest presenter from the Arizona Water Authority, Brian Conway, they're gonna talk about a decade long project that we has been going on using radar to monitor land subsidence in Arizona around their aquifer. It's gonna be a really good one. So don't forget to sign up on our events page. Even if you can't join the live event, you can get the recording and watch later. Imagine objective. This is an object-based classification. So it not only trains the pixels by reflectance values, like the traditional per pixel classifiers, like unsupervised and unsupervised, but it also takes into account size, shape, texture, shadow, truly emulating how we as humans interpret imagery and extract features easily 
by using the context and spatial surroundings. You can extract both linear and polygon features, objects. You can even do multi-class vegetation extraction with Imagine Objective. Clay. Clay is a new contrast stretch in 2020, and it's designed to optimize visualizing images with high dynamic range. What does that mean? So our more modern imagery is not 8-bit anymore. It's 11, 12-bit, but we still visualize these high dynamic range images with an 8-bit monitor. So mapping more values through lookup tables with the traditional smaller values, by doing a global contrast, the image is compromised. The contrast stretch is compromised. So what clay does is it adaptively and locally adjusts the contrast. It balances out anomalies, the extremely dark pixels like those in shadows, and the very, very bright pixels like those in clouds, but it keeps the midtones as midtones. So it really optimizes each and every pixel for best visualization. Now let's talk about the spatial modeler. The spatial modeler is a graphical user interface in which we can build customized models. And the operators are just like building blocks, like that of a Lego set. You can build easy, simple models, or once you become a Lego or a spatial modeling master, you can piece together many processes, workflows, different data types, including raster, vector, point clouds, attributes, all to build complex professional applications. Now let's look at some of these facts and benefits of the Imagine Spatial Modeler. It is the foundation of all Erdas Imagine functionality. So every time you run something in Erdas Imagine, even if it's through a graphical user interface, there is a model running in the background. Okay, so every time you run an NDVI, there's a model running in the background. There are over 500 operators for you to create your own customized models and workflows. If you created models circa 2013 with Imagine's legacy model maker, which was actually the first model maker that was in the geospatial industry, you can still use those models. If you made models in the 90s, they will still work and you can still transform them and use them in the current Imagine Spatial Modeler. It's our primary modeling authoring environment. It provides a graphical user interface instead of you having to write code. It uses all different types of data or can input raster, vector, point cloud operators. And as we saw in the last movie, it provides real-time feedback and previews. This is so important with the size of the images and the data that we're using today. By creating models and being able to see the results instantaneously, we can then go back into the model. We can change a slight variable or tweak a convergence threshold, make some slight adjustments and changes, preview it before we have to output that product and waste time before we have to go back. If you're not happy with the 500 uh, operators that are currently in Imagine and you need more functionality, you can use Python scripting and you can use it in two different ways. You can call Python scripts from the existing model or you can use the spatial model operators within an existing Python scripts. You can also connect to ArcPy. If you've got S3 licenses, you're able to do that as well. If you have command lines, there's a command line operator to run those. And if you want to even expand further, maybe you have your own change detection algorithm or a new machine learning algorithm you're trying, you can use the Spatial Modeler SDK to create your own operators and put those into Ernest Imagine yourself. The modeler is repeatable, it's batchable, it's automated. So this allows us to process massive amounts of imagery very, very efficiently. The cool thing is that there's hundreds of readily available free models for you to download, open, reuse, customize them, piece them together, all available. Some of them are within Erdas Imagine and some of them on our, are on our website. You will get this presentation later. Please click on this hyperlink 
so that you can see all of the models. This is such a great research, resource and learning tool. You can download the model, see exactly the workflow to create it, look at the example data and even download example data. These are great ways to learn how to use Spatial Modeler, take these and piece them together to create solutions of your own. Hexagon users can work with different machine learning classifiers in Spatial Modeler as well. So one of the most useful algorithms out there right now is Random Forest. It's based on multiple decision trees, constructs the trees, the multiple decision trees um, using training data, and then uses those trees for classification. In 2019, we introduced deep learning operators to Spatial Modeler. So the implementation was based on Google's TensorFlow Works uh, Toolkit. We built several spatial model operators that allow you to initialize and train, then run deep learning algorithms straight out of the box. We can also use deep learning operators to build our own convolution neural networks. So we've got CART, Random Forest, Inception, to name just a few, open source deep learning, frameworks, et cetera, from Google. So our vision here is to have this deep learning training database that has geospatial training images that we maintain at Hexagon. The database will continuously grow by using people like yourself, academics, researchers, our partners, our customers, and have a voluntary participation from you as our customers. We'll incrementally train the deep learning networks so that users will be able to use these trained networks for their own classifications, object detections, and extractions without collecting and maintaining their own training data. So let's look at all of this in action again. Now this is a tech talk by Ian Anderson, who is one of our spatial modeling gurus. It's very similar, uh, similar to e-training, so it's an informal video, this Tech Talks, describing and demonstrating solutions to a problem by using one of the knives of the Erdas Imagine Swiss Army knife. So this Tech Talk is about performing object detection using convolution neural networks, and the video goes through three easy steps. The first is using the machine learning layout to capture object footprints and chips. Next, we take those chips and we train them and we do the object detection, deep learning, convolution, neural network. Finally, the third step is to use the trained object detection, machine learning intellect to detect and identify oil palms in other aerial photos. So essentially, we want to count the palms. That's the goal of this video. First things first, if you didn't know, Imagine has different layouts. So there's the standard layout, but then we can also switch this into a machine learning layout. So it hides all the other functionality and only displays the functionality we need for machine learning. Next, we're going to add in an image. This is a virtual mosaic, so several tiles together, and we're gonna display it as no stretch. So we're seeing the true pixel values here, not through a lookup table, no contrast stretching. Now, since we are using the convolution neural network, which is a custom deep learning, what we want to do is to choose object footprints with image chips. So we're going to go up to the train tab, and the type that we want to do and use are object footprints with image chips. So we select this option. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a folder and this is where all the image chips will be created and stored. So creating a new folder where all of our training is going to be stored. Next, we're gonna give this a class name. So our training classes are oil palms and we're gonna give it the color green. Next, we're gonna collect footprints. And since these oil palms have different sizes, 
we're going to choose the one called Create Variable Size Footprint. Now you're going to want to make sure you collect a variety to get a very good set of training. In a true world example, we would need dozens, if not hundreds, to create this accurate training sample. But right now, we're just going to select a few, but making sure that there's a lot of different variety in our training sample. We want to make sure that the software understands exactly what we're looking for when we say oil palm. Now, this is GPU accelerated, um, but it does take a little time. So as we switch, this is step one of our process done. What we're going to do next is we're going to switch back into the standard Imagine layout, and we're going to start a spatial model. So what that spatial model means is we're going to take the training data folder, so what we just created, all those training samples, and the training steps. We're going to initialize or train that data into a machine intellect output. Now, the reason that we do this and put it into machine intellect output is that so we can use this intellect in other models. So we train it once, then we can classify many times with many other images. So this process, again, is GPU accelerated to speed up processing, but it also takes some time. That is step two done. And next, we're going to move into step three. And in step three, we're going to open up another image and look at another spatial model. We're going to apply the training to map the oil palms in this image. So the second model takes the new image and then the machine learning intellect, so what we did from step two, performs the object detection, and then what we do is output a set of features, a shape file that outlines the footprints and the boundaries of all of the oil palms in this image. So again, this is GPU accelerated, and the result is going to give us the oil palm objects that we're looking for and what we've trained delineated as footprints So we've run the process, and let's load in the shape file so we can see the results. And there we see the oil palms on a completely different image that we trained from a different image at the beginning. It does a great job of searching for and finding and doing the deep learning based on the image chips, saving the intellect, and now we have that intellect that we can apply to other images with oil palms. All right, now let's move into some student stories using some of this technology. The first I wanna share with you is the student contest winner of 2019. So this was the Hexagon Live student contest. Christopher Haney from the University of South Florida won, and he came to our Hexagon Live conference in Las Vegas and presented his work. And what Chris did was he wanted to look at the Texas Phoenix Palm Decline, TPPD. And this is a fatal systematic disease that kills palm trees. He was watching these palm trees die outside of his window every day and he wanted to understand why and what he could do to help. So Chris collected LiDAR data captured from a Leica airborne sensor, the ALS-50. Okay, so he stayed in the Hexagon family and used the Leica uh, uh, LiDAR sensor. He then used three multispectral images from three different time frames, and these were Worldview 2 images. So multispectral, three different time frames. He had to orthorectify the images first. Okay, so he used photogrammetry. Then he created NDVI. From those NDVI, he classified them and did a change detection for all three data sets. The next thing he wanted to do was look at two different types of machine and deep learning and compare them. So the first was random forest. He ran this through the random forest classifier and got results. 
He wasn't super satisfied with those. So he decided to make a modification of a machine learning algorithm and modify it and use his own. So he used a modification, the TensorFlow Deep Learning Classification, multi-band spatial statistics and indices, and did a data reduction and a stepwise refinement. And this actually gave him significant improvement over the random forest in the comparison. Chris used many, many knives of this Swiss Army knife of Erdas Imagine, photogrammetry, indices, modeling, machine learning, deep learning. This is a great example of how one package Imagine can process all of your data in a single project to provide results. And he then took this a step further and offered the results to government agencies to help them take action in monitoring and fighting this fatal tree disease. So congratulations to Chris. The Hexagon Live Student Contest Honorable Mention in 2019. The first one was Isla Duporge of Oxford University. She also used machine learning in her ass imagine but definitely in a different way. She used it to monitor herds of elephants. So she and her colleagues developed a close to real-time monitoring technique that allows scientists to track herds more accurately and efficiently, enabling more effective conservation planning and management for these herds of elephants. These researchers developed, again, a, convolu a convolutional neural network an algorithm that automates the detection of herds and satellite images. Isla does have a blog that we posted online, but her research is ongoing. So you can read the blog now, but it, expect more to come. She's going to have an interview. She has been in Africa recently doing some ground research. So we'll have some exciting updates from her very soon about this project. The second honorable mention for Imagine 2019, Tara McKinnon from Georgia Tech University. Hexagon has a very strong relationship with, with Georgia Tech, and the founders are actually of ERDAS, are some alumni. Um, Tara uses ERDAS Imagine to mosaic and classify many, many Landsat images over multiple years to look at the change over time for the entire state of Georgia. She used the NLCD, the National Land Cover Classification Database, which is a free plugin and it's helpful um, to be built on top of Spatial Modeler. It includes classification and regression tree, so the CART machine learning algorithm, to classify an image based on different independent variables. And those are the uh, original image alongside the derived image, such as NDVI, a dependent variable, which in this case is the NLCD product for the area of interest. So what she was looking for is really looking at some of the NLCD products. So this one was from 2011 and then looking at the change. So in her classifications of 2017 and 2018, you can see the Atlanta metro area has developed a lot and the urban sprawl and growth in the land in Georgia is rapidly changing due to population um, and other factors. And they wanna look at the actual change and then identify the reasons why. And if there is any way that um, there needs to be mitigation in terms of uh, changes in Georgia. All right, is everyone still with me? <laughs> You're hanging in there. I hope you are. So I'm going to transition from the Power Portfolio and Erdas Imagine now into the Map Portfolio. Remember that the Map Portfolio is to configure or use geospatial apps. And it's a geospatial application that's easy to configure and deploy. You can do that securely or openly depending upon your organization or university. You simultaneously can connect to either historic, static data, or live data feeds. A smart map is always intuitive, meaning that no, people with no geospatial experience should be able to look at it and understand what it means. It's lightweight, meaning through a browser or application, no heavy lifting, no installation, um, licensing, it's through a browser, and it's very targeted. So unlike Erdas Imagine, that has a thousand army, Swiss Army knife utensils. A smart map 
actually solves a very specific problem, just like an app on your phone. So there's three different map portfolios available for education. Well, why? Well, because they all have slightly different purposes in what they do and what they're designed to do. We understand at Hexagon that our customers have different needs, requirements, data security concerns, and so forth. So the variations of these platforms are because Hexagon listens to customer requirements and tries to create solutions that, to fit all needs in the market. So what I tried to do with this slide is to answer all of the questions about what's the difference between all three and which might fit your needs best according to your university network, your infrastructure, security, and whether you want to have control and install the software on premise yourself or simply log into a public cloud. So first, let's take a look at Smart Maps for EDU. This is a public Amazon cloud. So you log in via our website, the Map Exchange Store. There's no installation or, uh, or licensing required. It's all credential based. You get the feature analyzer, the dashboard that you saw, the one for COVID-19. You also receive Map Chest. Map Chest is a geospatial Dropbox to share data. So all different data, upload and share it between classmates, between student, professor. You can also compress data sets. So images and point clouds make them smaller, more manageable, save space, which saves money. So you can go from, let's say, huge TIFF images to smaller JPEG 2000 or ECW. Um, you can create WMS and WMTS. Now, if you're not familiar with these acronyms, these are OGC Web Services. OGC stands for Open Geospatial Consortium, and it's a group that creates standards. So this gives us the opportunity to share data openly without being restricted to vendors and proprietary formats and projections. This opens up the ability to share data through browsers and anything that is OGC compliant. So MapChest allows you to take your data, your TIFF files, your LAST files, and create OGC web services, web mapping service, and web map tiling services. You also get Map Studio, and you can create smart maps with the Erdhas Imagine spatial modeler on the cloud. So this actually includes Erdas Imagine and its spatial modeling capabilities done through a browser building models on the cloud. What Smart Maps also allows you to do is to connect to some content providers. So maybe you're building a smart map and you need data. You don't have it. You can connect to an app, map reader, draw a box around the area that you need, and ask for either free data like Landsat or look for some of our data partners for paid data. Smart Maps for EDU also provides you and gives you SDKs and APIs to allow you to expand and build upon our current solutions. Now moving into Map Enterprise for EDU. This can be an on-premise installation on a physical server, so at your university, or you could also put this on a public cloud like AWS or Google Cloud. The university configures their own installation. We don't do it for you. you. We give you the license. We give you the software. You configure your own. The same functionality that is all in Smart Maps is there except for connecting to this content. With Map Enterprise, you need your own content database and data. But the additional functionality that you get with Map Enterprise is quite a bit. There's geoprocessing. There's a workflow manager, a mobile app, as well as the latest and greatest Luciac Fusion integration. So these I'm going to go into more detail in just the next few slides. So stay tuned for these. I even have a movie. Finally, MapX for EDU. This is also an on-premise installation on a physical server, or you can put it on a public cloud, but again, it's the university's responsibility to configure their own installation, install it, et cetera. Um, think of this as Erdas Imagine on the cloud for GLint. There's one server to maintain, and all users log in through a browser. 
So why is this useful? Well, all processing is done on the server side. That means there's no specific hardware requirements for the client systems. The students don't have to have a specific operating system with a specific amount of RAM and memory. They don't have to have a, a, a license. It is all run through the server so that they log in through a browser and they're able to use processes like ERDAS Imagine for GOI and image ana analysis capabilities all done through their Chrome uh, browser. All right, so let's jump into these a little bit more. Um, what's included in Smart Maps? We just went over this, but this is a nice view. Um, feature Analyzer is included. Feature Analyzer is, is again, what the COVID-19 um, dashboard was all about. You can take either points, lines, or polygons. It can be CSV files, shape files. Um, you can take REST APIs, web services, RSS feeds, and you're simply mapping the attribute information into the graphs and charts of your choice. So whatever will be the most effective for the end user and the most friendly way to look at it for the audience, you map those attributes through the different graphs and charts. Feature Analyzer can be very, very simple through to very complex. I've taught fifth graders, elementary school students how to use Feature Analyzer. It's that easy. But we also have very, very complex uh, situations and, and customers using this from all different data sources, combining and updating in real time. So this is truly an app that can be from very, very beginner all the way through to advanced level. You also get a portion of the HTBN subscription, which includes the Map Studio, Map Chest, and the Map Reader, and it includes the SDK. So if you're going to do any development within Imagine, GeoMedia, the mobile SDK, you'll need this bundle to unlock the SDKs and be able to develop further. Now I'm going to give you an example, and this is the 2018 Hexagon Live Student Contest winner. Um, this is her master's thesis. Her name is Marissa Kraft, and she's of TU Darmstadt in Germany. Marissa wanted to support humanitarian aid organizations in monitoring and managing refugee camps. So she used Map Studio to create a dynamic map for buffer analysis and the Feature Analyzer app for monitoring disease within these camps. I'm going to show you the video in just a minute. I'm going to explain it first. So with a fast changing environment like a refugee camp, tools that allow for dynamic geospatial analysis with real time are needed to identify places um, that have don't have supplies. So this is to prevent riots, diseases, even death. We have devices now, mobile devices that have GPS, and they're so widely used now that the number of helpers in the field it has increased exponentially. We can all be collecting data. Currently, maps are mostly produced on demand by some organizations in the refugee um, world, but GIS isn't really used as a standard tool for data analysis. And this is because of, of financial, time, resources, all of these different factors. Therefore, there's actually a need that, that for tools like this, for, for non-GIS professionals to uh, be able to work with data and, and see the data like this. So now I'm going to start the movie. The resolution isn't the greatest, but I'm going to walk you through it. So what we're going to see here is the area. This is all simulated data. None of this is actually real data. This is just a prototype of how we could use this type of tool. So what we're seeing here are the boundaries of the different refugee camps. We can see here that there's two different diseases. And if you can't read that, that's diphtheria and measles rubella. You can see that we can also collect information about refugees as they're coming into the camp according to their gender, whether or not they're pregnant, how old they are, and when. So let's start filtering out diphtheria. This is what we're going to be looking at. So it's filtered out on the map. We're not looking at any measles or rubella. Next, we're interested in females that are not pregnant and that are between, that are, that are children between five and seven years old. 
Now let's look at the time frame down here at the bottom as the diphtheria starts to spread throughout the refugee camps. We can see this. We can predict this. Okay, so using the graphical display in the map, you can predict and anticipate where the next cases may occur, where we can have the proper medical supplies, vaccines, and run, make them ready and available. So this process, uh, this project was also done before COVID. But think of the local applications that smart maps and dynamic GIS could solve. Getting necessary supplies to hospitals, masks, ventilators, maybe food and medicine to supplies to patients at home. It's really something that we can think about and use these tools. Map Enterprise. So what exactly is it? It provides a unified geospatial enterprise platform that allows students, professors, researchers to easily create, configure, and share applications. And this includes smart maps. You can do this for courses, research projects, etc. So Map Enterprise could be used campus-wide, so stick with me here. This is exactly how organizations are using this platform globally. This is a smart city. A smart city may have six different departments. They've got natural resources, utilities, transportation. These departments usually operate in their own separate silos. They're completely independent of one another. Typically, they don't share software or they don't share data. And sometimes all six of them may buy exactly the same data set. They just don't know. Think of all the time, resources, and money that can be saved by centralizing applications and data sets to be used by everyone in the smart city. Your university may have six different departments that could create and configure their own apps. Your health department may want to create dashboards for things similar to COVID. They may have projects that require door-to-door -door inquiries using mobile devices to fill out forms. Your geology or geomorphology department we want to create apps that use radar displacement to study land movement using ERDAS Imagine, Spatial Modeler, or our radar tools. Your civil engineering or city planning department may want to use geoprocessing and ERDAS Imagine for change detection. The forestry department may want to use raster imagery and the vector tools to calculate clear-cut areas or even machine learning to count oil palms. The agriculture department may be interested in vegetation indices for best practices for precision farming. The idea here is that there's one map enterprise installation and depending upon the role or the user that logs in, the system is configurable so that each professor and student can see a different set of tools and may have a different set of privileges when they log in. So similar to the smart city, Maybe the city planner logs in and sees three different apps that he's gonna use that day. While the person in transportation who creates actual customized maps and apps, she logs in and sees something completely different. Each role and user may have a different experience, either creating and configuring or using the customized apps in their day-to-day -day work. We can think about it this way as well. Advanced GIS and remote sensing students and classes can create and configure the apps for the intro to GIS courses to learn the basic concepts and the theory of geospatial science. Now I'd like to talk about a specific smart map called Smart Census. Smart Census is a client server software platform primarily uh, developed for census completion. And this is a, a big topic in the news right now. There's a lot of countries uh, I just had to fill out my census form last week. It combines traditional GIS functionality with a powerful workflow and workflow, uh, workforce management tool to provide a total solution for each stage, the pre-enumeration stage, digital stage collection, and then post digital mapping. So Hexagon Smart Census has these three different modules and you sub can subscribe to one, two, or all three of them. And although desktop and mobile GIS software typically has all this functionality, there are limitations when it comes to handling, managing, and doing something very, very project specific like these workflows. And the effects are usually the data quality is compromised by trying to piece together the workflow 
in generic GIS solutions. So this type of technology helps us to transform and streamline and make sure the entire census workflow works as intended from start to finish and that we collect the most accurate data. Here you can see the mobile app for Smart Census in action. Some of the data is pulled from the database to fill in the blanks of a customized workflow form. Some are intentionally left blank to fill in manually as people are going around and collecting the information. They can use drop down lists, check boxes. They collect information and attributes required for census collection. If you're out in the field and you're connected to the internet, you're going to see the statistics and the info update in real time in the dashboards. However, if you're in an area where there's no connectivity, there's also fully offline uh, available mode. So you collect the info, it's stored on your advice, device, and then it's uploaded to the server uh, for immediate feed into the dashboards to see the results when you get back to the office and connect. I've also seen this app used in health and medical studies. Students can use this app going door to door to capture information regarding illness, vaccine, et cetera, and then look at the statistics through the dashboards. An additional functionality in the map portfolio is geoprocessing. And here what you see is the zonal image difference change, al change detection algorithm, which is directly from Erdas Imagine. So you are seeing two images before and after. So let's have a look at those two aerial photos, one from 2007, one from 2008. We're then gonna overlay parcels. So a vector data set delineating the parcel and who owns what piece of land. The idea here is to look at the change between each parcel and be able to order that change from highest amount of change through to lowest. So you can easily see here the change score at the top, and then we can look at the two parcels that have the highest amount of change. Maybe there was no building there before, there is now. Do they have the proper permit to put a building there? Maybe they've just changed vegetation, but there has been quite some change from year 2007 to 2008. We can visualize that, find it very quickly, and then understand what happened there without having to go door to door and asking for this information and looking at aerial photos um, just with our eyes. Map Enterprise also has a mobile application, as you saw with Smart Census. There's native um, app support for Android, iOS, Microsoft. As we said, there's full offline support and data synchronization. All changes are stored locally if you are offline. You have integration with native device maps, like Google Maps. Remember, Hexagon Geospatial is now an official Google Map reseller. It also has turn-by-turn -turn navigation, which is very, very useful. You don't have to take my word for it. You can test for yourself. We have a testing sandbox. So if you'd like to play in the sandbox and sign up, Please go to this link, sign up, provide your information, and we'll give you a URL, credentials, instructions, and even a tutorial so that you can play around with some of these applications yourself. MapX. MapX is geospatial intelligence for the cloud with a rich web-based client. So think of Erdas Imagine in a browser. It's an app that provides tools to exploit imagery, create imagery derived information products and reports, deployed within an enterprise system to be able to have centralized data storage as well as computation. So we think of the power portfolio, traditional GIS, remote sensing, the geospatial tradecraft, so what image analysts and the GMIT community need to complete their work, we throw that into our map portfolio to derive services, delivery, geoprocessing, content, workflow. And these information services are then fed into the client through a browser so that the user simply logs in through Chrome and is able to quickly take their shoebox, drag and drop, and do all kinds of different things within MapX. 
You can look at images in image space or in map space. In stereo, if you've got stereo data. You can do smart data management, simply taking your projects in a shoebox to drag and drop. Dynamically adjust your images, meaning that you can do contrast stretching, DRA. Um, it also has SIPs. So SIPs is the military symbology and um, contrast stretching standard. No other product on the market as an enterprise product has this standard SIPs contrast stretching. You can take measurements, so points, lines, polygons, lengths, areas. Perform smart annotation and markup to do rich styling, creating reports and maps. Collect features and edit. And it also has some geoprocessing. The geoprocessing built in is typically for our geoint specialists, like finding helicopter landing zones or doing line of sight analytics. There's several maps and, and uh, models, excuse me, in there as, as a out of the box. But if you would like to extend that, you can create your own models and imagine. Just simply create your own models and put the models on the MapX server and then all of your user, users will have access to those models within their login and their browser application. Again, please test it for yourself. You can come and play in the sandbox, sign up, we'll provide you with the URL, credentials, instructions, um, and, and tutorials to work through it and learn how to use it and see if it's going to fit within your courses and your projects. Now, still with me, we're almost there. Home stretch, everyone. We're now moving into Luciad. This is the tomorrow, the future. This is a set of APIs to create high performance 5D and analysis solutions that are interoperable with many, many other systems, technology, and data that allow our students, professors, and researchers to develop very diverse solutions, including real time data and analysis capabilities. Now there's three different pieces of Luciad. We've got a server, a desktop, and a browser. I'm not gonna go into all of these into detail, but what's important to note is Luciad is an API, APIs, right? So you are going to need to know some Java and or JavaScript in order to work with these platforms. So what is Fusion? This is the server. It's a high performance geospatial server solution. Very, very important in all of Luciad, these are all OGC compliant. And if you'll remember, this is the standard so that we can consume and produce data that's going to work in all different platforms, not vendor specific, not projection specific. You need to know some Java if you're gonna be customizing this application. It allows you to store and manage data intelligently and feed it into many different applications. Think of a weather server, terrain analysis, image processing, tiling, real-time sensor streaming. You can use this for headquarters and or remote and deployed operations. What's great about this is it's not just Windows, it runs on all different operating systems, Windows, Linux, Macs, and more. You can use Luciad Fusion on the cloud or on premise. Now let's dig into Lightspeed. That is the desktop 2D and 3D map viewer, also OGC compliant. You'll need to know Java if you want to work in Lightspeed. Think of visualizing large volumes of tracks, so moving things, moving assets, troops, ships, trucks, planes. Think of real-time air traffic display, command and control centers, mission planning, advanced 4D visual analytics, AI, change detection, image processing, and combining any of the above. It runs on Windows, Linux, and Macs. Now let's go to the browser, which is called Luciad RIA. This is a very high-performance browser solution, both 2D and 3D. Very important that it's a browser solution at 3D, you're needing JavaScript and Java experience. It handles millions of static points, lots of big data, dynamic tracks, and can update at up to 60 frames per second. So you draw and you edit and you get 
instant feedback on a browser with massive, massive data sets. Um, think of clustering and heat maps, um, styling, split views, and you can integrate it into any web technology. It runs on any browser supporting HTML. There are absolutely no plugins. And now I'm going to show you an example. So this project was created before COVID-19 consumed the world as we know it. But just think about all the projects and research that could be done using this Luciad technology to model and analyze the, uh, the movement of the virus with the data that we know now and what we could potentially predict with the mapping cases and the known mapping cases that we know now. So this is a project done by the University of Leuven, Department of Microbiology. And they use this to visualize and analyze and filter phylogenic trees on a geographic map and time filter. So they're using the tool for viral lineages that migrate geographically and are re represented by jumping lines on the upper panel. The visualization is simulated over time using a fixed window of time as a filter. The length of the line is inversely proportionate to the length of the branch in the phylogenic tree. That is no longer geographic jumps on the map indicate branches that quickly traveled over a larger distances, while shorter jumps indicate branches that slowly traveled over smaller distances. The timing of the jumps is indicated in the lower panel, which represents a timeline. These plots are a new viral lineage over time. The colors in the timeline match the region of the same color on the geographic map. On the map, uh, a darker color indicates a larger viral lineage amount. Using this tool, we can also apply a color filter in the branches of the tree. So you can change the different colors of the particular amino acids to break this down even further and perform advanced analytics on specific polymorphisms. A great project done by the University of Leuven to talk about viral lineage, how it spreads, and using these different lines as an indicator. Here's another interesting example using a creative idea to do a hybrid analysis from the Polytechnic University of Valencia in Spain. The student wanted to know where Spain's military assets were located geographically. So their tanks, equipment, buildings, and even where their troops were um, located using a map. Then he wanted to understand where cyber threats were in comparison. So using situational awareness to really show the relationship between cyber components and real world military assets to know when and if we needed to take action against the potential cyber threats um, according to the actual military assets. Another university in Leuven used Luciad Lightspeed, which is again the desktop version, to develop artificial intelligence to identify different objects, planes, ships, vehicles, extract these and then count the vector features, visualize them in both the desktop, which is Lightspeed, and then Luciad RIA, which is the browser. So this student was studying AI and machine learning. Same concept and overall goal as the oil palm example in Erdas Imagine. The difference is the platform and the goal of what the student will learn. Remember, Erdas Imagine is a Swiss Army knife of tools to plug and play. Some configuration to piece together some models and workflow to get the res desired result. But this Luciad platform is a developer toolkit in which the student starts with a set of APIs, a blank slate, and develops using their own code and own algorithms, or they can take industry standard algorithms and modify them to build their own applications. 
you're going to get all of these links so that you can view more Lucia projects on your own. I'm running out of time and can't do any more of these. But one of my favorite is the movement of people through an amusement park. This is a great example and won a contest um, to understand the movement of people through a park and to find suspects where a crime took place. This final video is an example of a pilot project done using a combination of two of our portfolios. So the map portfolio, which is the dashboards you're seeing here, and the Luciad portfolio, which is this visualization of this huge data set of data points in this browser. This is Denver, close to where I live. This project was done in conjunction with a company that has many algorithms for simulating and modeling plume dispersion. So if there was a problem or an emergency at this chemical plant in Denver, what is the concentration, the timeline, the population at risk, knowing where people are in downtown Denver at very specific times of the day, rush hours, lunch time? What if we added in wind speed and other variables? This example truly follows Hexagon's mission and 5D location intelligence, driving a smart digital reality. We are understanding what has happened, monitoring what is happening, predicting here what could happen, simulating and planning for what should happen, and then potentially influencing and participating in what will happen. If you have a story, please reach out. We love to publish student stories. We've got a template um, that you can work through to tell us what your project was all about, and we will publish it to the Sensing Change blog. Other student stories we have, I've gone through some of these, but there are more in here. Please feel free to look at them and get some ideas for your own research and for your students. If you do have the desktop education package, you receive free student licenses. So if you are current with your annual subscription or permanent software license package, students will receive activation IDs with all modules of our desktop program. Please check the Erdas Imagine system specs for supported operating systems. If you're going to install on your home system, you have to make sure that Imagine will install with the correct operating system and hardware specifications. The license keys for these will be prov provided to the university. So if you're a student, you can contact your professor to get the license. If you can't find your professor or don't know which one, let us know and we'll point you in the right direction. Students, don't reach out to us directly, but what you can do is go into the community. So register for the community, leave your questions there. You'll be answered by support and product management. If you do need to contact us, please go through your university designated POC and your professor to ask any questions. My name is Mike Lane, and I thank you for your attention in this quite long presentation. I'm very proud to work for a company like Hexagon, who uses innovative technology to transform data into actionable information and can offer solutions and services to those in need during this crisis. I wish you, your family, your friends, and all of your loved ones to stay safe and healthy. Please wash your hands and let us know how we at Hexagon can help. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, we'll answer those personally uh, via email. Thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Mike. Great stuff. I'd like to thank all of you for attending our webinar and learning more about leveraging new multidimensional data sources for academia. Don't forget to join our ever-growing community to become part of the conversation and check out all of our education programs. If you're interested in learning more about our solutions, upgrading your licenses, or exploring our full product line of GIS solutions, please reach out to your Hexagon sales rep or contact us via our website, hexagongeospatial.com. Thanks again, and stay safe, folks.